Hey, we're live. Hey, so anyway, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kate couldn't be here tonight, so I'm DMing for better or worse. This is Tabletop Fairy Tales. Uh, we will not be playing the normal campaign. We did, the last time we couldn't play, we did a little, what was going to be a one shot. Um, that is now just going to turn into our sort of like <clears throat> off-season B-team campaign thing. Um, and maybe I'll get better if I do this again, because this is probably not going to be that great. We'll see what happens. Um, on my part, don't, they're going to be amazing. Don't put yourself down like that. Not not yet. Not until I've actually done wrong. Um, so they are in, oh my gosh, I forgot the name of the place. Uh, that's really bad, and my notes are all at home, so that's really great. That's where I'm um, so, it's fine. I'm going to look it up while I'm talking, because I'm doing things. Yeah. yeah, it's a sword in the stone world, essentially. Um, it's the uh, the world for what would be, like, the UK, England -y type area. And so, essentially, what's happened is they have been uh, individually summoned, hadn't met each other prior by someone whom they hadn't met, uh, and it turned out to be this wizard. And he had tasked them with recovering his spell book from a sorceress that lived nearby. And it's called Alithum. It's the place. I'm going to write that in really big letters right here. Alithum. Oh, you found it? Yes. Okay. And you this is my multitasking it? skills coming into play. And this is in the plane of Venosia. Or is it Venice? Did she say? It? I'm going to call it Venosia. Yeah. And she's going to hate me if it's wrong. The letters. Do you want to spell it? A-L-I-T-H-O-N. A -A Alithum. And um, they, they set off to go recover this tome and found out that this sorceress was a lot more powerful than was originally indicated. And they did nearly triumph, and she plane shifted away, or she did something. I don't know if they actually are familiar with the plane shift spell, but she disappeared, and they couldn't find her, and they returned to this wizard empty-handed. He introduced himself as Merlin, and he took pity on them and gave them a little bit of gold. One of the characters had left prior, so she has not yet received anything. Um, it is currently the middle of the night. So we're going to pick up basically right where we left off. Essentially, the three of you are walking out the door. Uh, it's a beautiful night sky. You're in the middle of the forest. You can hear uh, frogs croaking from a nearby small stream. Uh, there's there's a lot of starlight and moonlight. It's a pretty cloudless night. You're in the not the heart of the forest, but you're pretty far in. And if you remember, you had to follow some markers to get there. So finding your way back out. Is going to be a little bit trickier and less into light source or dark vision, which I think. I have super um, dark vision, and so does. You do have dark vision. I think. Yeah. I do too. Yes, we all. Okay, have dark so I actually don't have any trouble seeing it. Should like, be just fine if you remember the general direction <coughs> in which you're going. Um, how far would you have gone before when the barbarian left you on your own? Uh, I, it depends on how long they, how far we got into it before they said something, because. Um, well, you left just a few moments really before the rest of the group did. They kind of poked yeah. around a little bit to see what they could find, and there wasn't much. And um, you both basically followed the path back. You didn't stop in the house, um, but they they basically made it clear after traveling for just a little bit of ways past the house, essentially past the, past the cottage, the little cottage in the woods, that they travel on their own and they had no interest in taking on a liability. Um, I mean, I'll head back to the only place Plenty you know. Yeah. Do you have, do you have uh, dark vision? No. Yeah, so that makes sense. So yeah. you just head back to, yeah, ho hoping to maybe find shelter or something for the night, not really knowing what that's going to hold for you, little little rogue on your own. Oh, and everybody take a second to introduce your character so that everyone watching, whomever that may be, uh, knows uh, what you're playing. We'll start with Jean. The worst one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, yeah, let's start with let's start with Jay. <laughs> and by the time we get to Jeannie, you'll have come up with a name, right? She doesn't have a name. Oh, that's well, actually she's, that's fair she's because... She's purposefully named... <laughs> <laughs> you are nameless. Oh, oh, nice. look down. oh. And there's a dog. The chair cracked, so it freaked her out. Oh, oh yeah, this is this is my dog. Oh, baby. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Jay, I'm playing Stokely. He's a gnome artificer <clears throat> who's walking with his um mechanical companion, which is a giant. Well, it looks like a man in armor and seven feet tall, but it's actually just basically a robot. 
Yeah. The Quiver. Quiver. I'm from the Texas. Quiver. I need to write that down because I forgot. Quiver. Okay. And Jess? I am playing Dinkus, and she is a tiefling sorcerer, but in mixed company, she will appear as a human. <clears throat> For purely devious and mischievous reasons, she doesn't care if people know that she's a tiefling. She just wants to fuck with them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm playing Oriana, another tiefling. Um, tiefling Bard. Bard. Um, she is... Uh, you know a lot about her, but she's really good with weapons. That's yeah. kind of all you know. And she's very wimpable. She has, like, bells on her. Her musical instrument are bells on her wrists and ankles, and she's a dancer. But. And, okay. So, I'm not even in the screen anymore. Cool. Could you move? <laughs> oh, this isn't good. Let's see if we can. <clears throat> no, that's fine. I'm okay with that. I can zoom in forward. Yeah, just go forward a little bit. Now you don't have a dog. Yeah. There we go. I'm afraid to break the chair for real. Those kind um, of play all I think it was just that you leaned to get one against what was behind you, and there was <clears throat> clicking. I don't think it was. Or no, no, it was the chair. Oh well. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, so, mine is a mysterious, nameless rogue who is human. Yeah, she's human, and in all confidence. It was a one shot, so I just made a random character, and now I'm just rolling with knowing knowing nothing about her. Like that that's her whole character yeah. now. In yeah, true she's fashion. Committed. She's a committed genius. <laughs> I'm really happy when you don't commit genius. I'm You're committing to not knowing anything about her. <laughs> and to be fair, you never actually introduced yourself. Yeah. You just kind of showed up. I just showed up. I don't think I hear you. I think everybody walked up to the area. And I was like, hi, I'm so glad. Yes. Everyone just looked at me. I was like, yeah, yeah. you're, you're the only even, nice do one. Do we even know each other's names other than you? I think you exchanged names. I don't remember. I just remember being really like, hi. And then I just like, I know oh, it was Celery. That was probably yeah. Oh, shoot. Oh. Well, okay, so the way to which you a couple of these chairs were broken, and oh, oh. Yeah, it's broken. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I know I was gonna try to lean down and just get it. Hold on, hold on. Nope, just stand up. No, okay. just, just move the chair. I'm gonna get you this one. That's fine. Um, when we move, the movers when we came home had fixed the chairs. Apparently, they didn't do a very good job. Oh no. Well, minor distractions. Um, that's fine. So basically, uh, we'll just kind of be jumping in wherever they left off. They haven't taken a rest. They haven't had a moment to really do much to equip themselves. And that's where we'll be starting once we figure out the set. It's fine. I'm probably going to break mine too. I'll just sit on the floor. Well, there is an extra one, so you could just. True. You can, if you sit on the floor, they won't be able to see you. I'm okay with that. No. I can't, can't just see her. I can't believe the whole leg came off. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, like, that was the problem with them. Like, some of the legs came off, and the movers fixed them. It's appropriate. I haven't, sit, I haven't sat in these chairs since, so. Because we don't sit at the dining table. Oh, my God. Oh, wait. Can you see me now? Yeah. yeah. We're at the same level. Okay, <laughs> you're just a little bit low. Well, no, we're not the same now. <laughs> <laughs> like wait. No, you're fine. At least you're visible. Are so you okay. <laughs> you want to be the barbarian? Be like shorter than five yeah. seven. Yeah. yeah. Anybody want my price? I'm full. I have a lot. <clears throat> Maybe in a little bit. I like to think that this is an in-character conversation. Yeah. Yeah, and we won my prize. <laughs> yeah, sure, later. Oh, that's where she went. She went to Chick fil A. Yeah. She went to Ye old Chick fil A. Yep. Yeah. He said Ye old oh, Chick fil A. Chick fil A. So you actually, um, you can only see about 20 feet because you're in the middle of the forest and there is starlight and moonlight. Uh, so there's dim light, but you can't really see very well around you. So just make a quick survival check for me. To see if you can effectively figure out how to get back. Natural one. I love it. Okay. That's a good start. So you are trying to find your way back to the cottage. You three have stepped out into the evening air. The door closes behind you. 
Oh, like Joker's to... is in her second disguise. I think I said that last one before they went into the house. She mm-hmm. changed into her other form. So what, what, what does she look like? It was the. I mean, still, you know, pretty lady human. This one has like kind of mousier brown hair though, <laughs> mm-hmm. as opposed to the other one that had like dark brown hair. Okay. Slightly different look. So you all step outside, and her form shifts, and she looks slightly different. <sighs> <laughs> I don't want to really. I don't really want to make camp right in front of someone's house. That's weird, but we could. We have a tent <laughs> in front. Start pulling the tent out of my bag of holding again. Did he? Like, did he poof from the house, or is he still in the house? He's in the house. Damn. He just walked out. Why would just sleep in the house? <laughs> she took her house with her when she disappeared. Oh uh, no, Merlin's right. Merlin's yeah. house is still there. Yeah, yeah, his his cottage is still there. Yeah, so I'm just saying, like, just go back and be like, hey yo, we're gonna spend the night. I mean, I could, but you just kill him. <laughs> not no. what I was saying, and I'm not here, so. <laughs> he already paid us. I'm just saying. No. No. Uh, and actually, all three of you make perception checks. So, oh, geez, Louise. That bounced a lot. I know. It's because it's glass. It was just like... Uh, 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 perception? Perception. I'm going to a piece of paper just to roll That's on. a 19. Yeah. Hey-o. Um, I hilarious and bad this year last time. <laughs> 14. 14. Okay, so you guys are standing around kind of figuring out what to do. You're pulling a tent out to... So uh, like showing them the tent again. Like, yeah. Sure. And uh, Olivia, who is g- kind of disinterested in what's going on around her, uh, happens to hear the sound of somebody kind of trying to pick their way through the forest. Um, like basically the sound of footsteps, but there's also like a stutter step where they might have stumbled or something like that. Somebody's clearly having trouble. Um, navigating or traversing somewhere nearby. Does um, it sound like they're just walking or are they trying to be sneaky? Um, it would be a little bit hard to tell. You can tell that when the steps are relatively um, evenly paced, it doesn't sound... If they're trying to sneak, they're doing a really poor job of it. Okay. And it's off... Um, the, the road back is in like a westerly direction and it's kind of like the west and north a little bit. So. Okay. Sorry, my dog is going nuts. Okay. There's somebody nearby. Oh. Well. <laughs> I have a gun. I, I'm not that scared. I think we know. Artificer, artificer, Art- artificer, yeah. artificer with a gun. Yeah, I have a gun. Okay, I just have to say, if I have to roll in your character, they're gonna know even less about. I'm gonna know even less about her than the current. I'm one. gonna have to come up with a character for her on the spot. So it's gonna. Yeah. Let me just write you a backstory really quick. Um, go ahead and make a perception check. No, I'm with that. You can do the uh, what the fuck is my D and D character? Natural one. Oh, God. Yeah, give me those dice. You're breaking yeah. through the darkness. You have no idea where you're at. Oh, God. The I rolled an 18. So you just try it again. 11. That's better. That was a lot better. Even. It's just two ones. <laughs> That's sad. Double one. I've had that happen before. <laughs> um, so uh, the, the sound doesn't necessarily get closer. But you definitely hear the sound of someone tripping over probably like a big root or maybe a fallen branch or something and kind of like thudding to the ground amidst like a swirl of dry leaves and uh, broken small, uh, not branches, but like the small offshoots. I'm going to go see what it is. Okay. And if they annoy me, I'm just going to kill them. So you head off uh, towards the, the sound. Obviously, it's not very far away. You can hear it, uh, and it, it takes you a few moments. You're probably uh, – how far would you go before you'd stop and turn back, actually? Not super – she's not super invested. She's just making sure it's not, like – she's also not worried that they're in any danger because she's aware of the fact that they can hit all of them. She's just kind of like, you're intruding upon this space, and I'm going to see what the hell is your problem. Okay. But uh, she wouldn't go too far. 
Okay. I just like that as the super sneaky, stealthy rogue. I'm just stumbling around in the dark. Well, you didn't clarify if you were trying to, to sneak around, so I just no, but that I mean, just see. like as someone whose profession is hiding in the dark. Like, <laughs> yeah, but darkness in a forest that you're wholly unfamiliar with, and we're led into this area a little bit different than yeah, using shadows to remain unseen. So, I mean, you would still be quite adept at being scared, probably. And if you were trying to sneak, maybe, like, making less noise. But trying to find your way back to this place that you're vaguely maybe aware of. Um, so you you start walking, and it's probably about 20 to 40 yards away, maybe, maybe about halfway between there, 30 yards or so. You get to a point where you can see, since you have dark vision, just almost just barely at the outline, the figure of someone kind of, picking their way through some underbrush and heading off uh, to the south. Mm-hmm. They're heading south. That's away from us, though, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if they're heading away from us, I'm just going to turn back and get to the other two. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so if you're leaving, it's not my problem. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you return. Are you, what are you guys doing? Are you going to camp right here? Are we going to go right here? I, we could. It's, it's just kind of weird. We can run outside his house. We come out in the morning. There's a, there's a well around the side, so there's fresh water and a little stream. I guess this, is a, this isn't a bad place. He didn't tell us we can't do it, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you set up your tent. You How many people up. fit in your tent? Uh, just, just a normal tent. So two, I think. Or yeah. did, I think they specify that there's one person and two people, person tents. Can I? Can you, I don't, it just says tent, but I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so you set oh, up a tent. Um, um, presumably, I guess, for you and Fibra. Yeah. Okay. Because I'm like half a person, but he's like one and a half people. So, so it evens out. So it evens out to two. Uh, so are you making a fire or are you camping in the darkness uh, in your, outside the house? It's it's like early autumn, so it's not necessarily cold. But by morning, it would probably be a bit brisk if there weren't one. But it also wouldn't be unlivable. Tieflings might be a little cold. Yeah, a tent sleeps too. Okay. So. All right. So are you all going to go to sleep at the same time? Yeah, I think so. Right. Are any of us going to watch? I'm going to have my robot watching my tent. Make sure no one does anything. Like sitting in it. I'll put like hang it. Anything to tent? I care about my tent. And me. <laughs> Lovely. You've not, you've not proven that I should care about you. You've not proven that you care about me. So why, why are you, why are you at me like that? A way of mine, it's just you have a weird obsession with your tent. It's a, uh, if it starts raining, I won't get wet. I would say you have a weird obsession with his tent. He hasn't talked about his tent. No, I just showed you because you asked how big my bag is on the inside. And so I showed you that I can fit a tent in it and other things. Yes, you're just a head. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked. Like, I know. No, look where you were, but now yeah, you're like, like, like <laughs> full game. possible. Now you're forehead. <laughs> I, I could try to. I'm already kind of like okay. having to like hunch to stay in those? camera. Yeah, instead of I'm staying, I'm like, you know. Are you gonna get up and get it? Actually, if you guys switched, maybe it would. But I like a velvet chair. Oh, okay. yeah, I mean, it's, it's the oh god, it's a velvet chair. chair? Yeah. It's the tiefling sorcerer chair. That's oh, the important yeah. thing. I don't know how many you want. I'm really glad that I probably would have noticed before I had ever touched it, but. I have like a tactile, a very visceral tactile sensory response to yeah, it. It's not good, so okay. don't let me sit on that chair later on. Um, okay, um, go ahead and make another perception check. Wait. <laughs> you have a modifier. Uh, 20, not 20. natural. So you're, you're picking your way through the underbrush. It's quite dark outside. There's enough starlight and moonlight for you to not be completely blinded, but you're having a hard time. You don't know where you are. You're in a completely unfamiliar area. You're not really used to picking your way through forests by yourself. 
Um, and so I'm you're, city gal. yeah, you're, you were spending more time trying to figure out where you are than being quiet necessarily. And as you're kind of picking your way where you think you might be going the right direction, you hear the distinct sound of vaguely familiar squabbling voices right. to the east of you. Just something I don't vague. care about your tent. Something vaguely about tents, yeah. Oh. You don't, you can't tell what they're saying. Um, you you just hear voices in aggravated tones, essentially. It's not a pleasant conversation, whatever is being discussed. I guess I'll head over there. Okay. But That's I'll fair. stealth. Perfect. Make a stealth check. <laughs> What's everybody's passive perception, by the way? Oh, oh god. Um, that wasn't 12. great. A 16. Because I rolled a 6. No, mine's an 11. <laughs> uh, 19. Mine's 12 and my right. robot is 13. It's higher than mine. 13. What'd you say yours was, Jess? 11. 11. None of y'all see And yours me. is 19? Okay. Oh, wait, you see me. I thought yeah. I heard something else. Okay. <laughs> well, not yet. You're still yeah. quite a ways away. Oh, yeah, but... So, um... I don't passive perception. I almost took observant, but then I didn't. So you're in your tent. You two are annoyed. Um, are you going to take watches, or are you all going to go to sleep at the same time? <coughs> I guess I shouldn't be asking you that. I'm asking you what you're doing for the evening. I'll take first watch. Okay. I'm not taking any watches. <laughs> first watch is all night watch, so if you want to do that, then feel free. Oh, I'm going to sleep after a certain amount of time. Okay. Whether or not you wake up or not. Wait, how far away are they from the house? How far away are you from the house? Um, we're still in the clearing, I'd assume. We're not like yeah. in the woods. Okay. <clears throat> I, was, I was actually trying to sing just then and my voice just wasn't working. That was weird. <clears throat> So, so enough away that you're not like literally camping right next to the house, yeah, but you yeah. haven't ventured back into the forest necessarily. Yet. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um. So you're you're sitting up, still kind of unused in this forest. You've just kind of laid down on the ground, I guess, in the bedroll and gone to sleep. Um. Stokely is in his tent, and after after a few moments, probably about ten minutes or so, you hear footsteps of someone coming towards you but they are very deliberate slow footsteps you probably wouldn't have heard them no branches are being broken no leaves are being rustled but you were already sort of ill at ease and kind of paying attention to the world around you um i want to cast dissonant whispers what does that do I don't know it's you. So. Yeah, that's no, I fair. Know. I just don't know what that is. Um, dissonant whispers. I believe it's a wisdom um, save. Make a wisdom save. D &D. You make a wisdom save, and if you fail, you take like three d six psychic damage. And I think, and you run the opposite direction. Fuck off! <laughs> I don't know what it's No, I know. You run away from her. Oh, that's and not. And I'm bad. hearing deliberate footsteps coming towards us. I think it's someone else. Wisdom yeah. save. Wisdom. Eighteen. <clears throat> okay. How, what is if you do, if eight plus proficiency plus your spellcasting ability modifier? So eight plus three, eleven plus five, sixteen. Okay, so you don't run away because you didn't fail, but you but still you take, take half damage. of three. Well, yeah, you take half. You have, yeah. So you are making your way, and you're getting to the point where you your eyes have adjusted enough that you can see vaguely in the distance what looks like the break in the trees. You take five psychic damage. And you, this terrible feeling washes over you like someone is trying to take control of your very person and invade your mind. And you manage to push these tendrils of some other essence out of your brain. And it's almost as if someone hit you in the face, like you walked right, right into a wall. And take five points of psychic damage. Okay. <clears throat> Help me now. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess actually roll initiative. Oh shit! Oh, Everybody or just those two? Well, you two are asleep, and this is not a spell that makes sound. No. Unless I guess, how did you cast it? You're a bard. It's a verbal spell. It's only verbal. Well, the thing about bars is that they can channel their casting through music, and so you don't necessarily have to have, right. like, the verbal and somatic components, but you have to do something. Technically, I guess bards don't actually ever have to do anything to cast if you, like, read it in a certain way, but you have to do something, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. even if that's, yeah. I can yeah. just, like, ring my bells. Okay. Like, 
And just like picture this, like, because you're like a pinkish skinned tiefling, right? Yeah, it's like pink this skin, white hair. It's a little pink tiefling. It's just sitting there, and she's just like jingles bells, and all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> really jingle bells. Uh, so I guess you guys can both make a perception check to see if you wake up. Um, I got a 26 on initiative. Oh I got a 15, and my robot got a 14. I got a natural 20. Apparently, she's a light sleeper. Dang, yeah, you you did. Does um, jack of all trades it doesn't work with initiative, right? Yeah, it does actually. Okay, attack your proficiency modifier. So, so Unless it's like 26. Seven. No, it's okay. like an 8. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Four, so. Uh, and your did your robot act, ever actually go to sleep? Uh, no, I was in my okay. I was in my tent. I was gonna be casting like mending because my robot got all beat up. Like so it was like this charger. Oh, yeah. so you weren't actually asleep. You were behind him, so you couldn't see. Okay. Like I got in my tent and then took the robot into the tent and was like, "All right, mending repeatedly." Okay. Yeah. Um, for I, a little bit, not all night. And what did what did Quiver roll? Fourteen. Fourteen. And you rolled a fifteen. Fifteen. I did a little bit better than my. Yeah, the minus the, four intelligence. The faint sound yeah. of jingling like rings in the distance. You know that she's wearing bells. Yeah. She moved maybe. Yeah. Or something. The, you were. Casting mending. Yeah. You were asleep, <laughs> and the sudden jingling of the bells. You know, you're just kind of like you're in that stage where you're drifting off, and your like legs about to kick, and there is some jingling of bells, and you well, wake up. They've seen her cast spells before, and that's something she does when she casts spells, so they might recognize it as that, because that's a specific movement she does when she's casting spells. Oh, okay. no, I'm just assuming you're just being loud. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. But you, you're doing it deliberately, and so if they if they chose to look into it, then they would have cause to. Yeah. And okay. I can be stealthy. I just think you're being loud, so it's like, okay, well, like, she, just, he, he doesn't know her very well yet. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so you wake up. Uh, kind of like I said, you were uh, Olivia. You were in that stage where you're about to fall asleep, and like you had that heaviness, and your leg was about to kick, and then there's that ringing of the bells, and you are awake. Um, so it is your action, Jeannie, since you rolled higher on initiative. So something has just caused you pain. Yeah. So can I tell the direction it came from? I mean, I'm gonna assume the direction I'm heading because yeah how, what's the range on that spell 60 feet right 60 feet. yeah you you were pretty close you're you yeah the yeah. thing about something like oh like okay make a perception check actually to see if you could hear the bells 19 you did hear the jingling of bells basically straight in front of you and slightly to the left okay so you said I could see the the break of the edge of the yeah. trees so right? I'm gonna it's about 20 feet away Okay, and I don't have a fire going because I can see in the dark. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys didn't make a fire, so no. it's just still dark. But yeah. you, you, I can see 120 feet. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna well, head, head up to the front of the clearing and hide behind a tree and okay. see what I can see. I'm okay. Sure uh, and you can hide as a bonus action. Right right yeah. Okay. So make a stealth check. They have the normal. Okay, so you you make your way up to a tree sort of towards the edge where you yeah. can see where it thins out and you I mean, slide behind it and you feel pretty yeah. hidden. Basically, I just, can I, now that I'm there, I, I want to be able to see them. them. I know. Yeah. Or like, I wrote it down so what do so I, I see? Like, do I see them? Or? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're 40 yeah, feet away and, and the way dim light works for humans I believe is you can see within 15 feet and you can kind of make out shapes within an additional 15 basically or can I like identify that? them as the people I went were with what you what do you see because it is pretty dark out here although this is a clearing so there's a little bit more yeah. light coming well, through so you peek around the side yeah, of the tree and you can see the there. outline of the cottage and you can see a tent or some sort of structure that you don't remember being there before and you do see um two figures one is laying down and one is sitting down make another perception check god i'm really not rolling well uh 16 um that's that's well enough to tell that it looks <laughs> like it, right yeah it looks like the general makeup of the people that you left behind okay then I, I mean, if I can identify them, then I'm just gonna, you know, spend the rest, spend my action, I guess, peeking out, going like, hey, what the fuck? 
Oh. Now it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's you. While you come sneaking into the camp, what else am I supposed to do? Fair enough. And I'm just, are we out of initiative now? Or I mean, that depends on whether she attacks you. Are y'all going to attack me? Is I could even come out of my tent. No, I know. <laughs> Those two. Um, I cast Heal Wounds on you. Oh. Thank you. No, oh, you can attack Well, you have so. to get up and go touch her to cast um, your wounds. Well, so. I mean, I'm walking. Okay. I'll, I'll just, if we're out of initiative, then I'll just keep walking if towards you. Well, that's not something your character would know. Me. But yeah, if you just, if she's oh, just no, talking no. to you and. I literally like know what I was going to do if we didn't start into initiative. So I would be walking towards that okay. area okay. if um, we're out of initiative. It's eight plus my charisma, right? Yes. So uh, 13. Oh, thank you. That healed me a lot. Yeah, because you guys are still a little beat up from your battle with the sorceress. Oh, yeah. So, I don't have that anymore because oh, I deleted her. That's fine. You're about to rest, so it'll be okay. Yeah. So I'm literally just going to say thank you and walk past y'all and go to the cottage. Because I don't know what y'all did there. Okay. What do you do when you approach? A knock. You knock? Okay. He's asleep. Knock louder. <laughs> You, you knock the first time and you don't hear anything. He's a heavy sleeper. You knock the second time and you hear, What, what? Who, who? I'll knock again, I guess. Because I don't want to be shouting through the door. That's fair. A moment goes by and you hear like the distinct flapping of wings and. There's some like creaking sounds, maybe like wood move, like furniture, if you were to sit down on wood furniture or something like that. And so like low grumbly moans. And you can hear the sound of somebody's feet shuffling. Okay. Oh, I realized why I wrote superior, because it says you have superior vision and dark and dead, but it's still 60 feet. That's yeah. why I wrote superior. superior dark and dead is only for ground. And you get sunlight sensitivity from that. Yeah. So you don't want that. Yeah, I and I think like Duragar or something, something like, like that. that. But it's but like the underground people. Yeah, yeah. No. I just misread it. Yeah. The subterranean. Pieces. I would have been able to see her anyway, so it didn't make a difference. Yeah. Okay, I can tell you what Tiefling has. I I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have one talent in life, and just knowing what Tieflings have. No I'm kidding. Um, so uh, after you hear the the shuffling sounds, the door just kind of like slowly opens just a little bit, and you see the a little bit bedraggled vision of the old man that you had spoken to earlier. This time there is a very tired and grumpy looking owl sitting on his shoulder who is giving you just the evil eyes. He's so, so yes, presumably. He, it, like one eye is mostly closed and the other one is glaring daggers at you. And the, the old man just kind of blinks a little bit. So takes his long sleeve and wipes off off some spectacles and puts on his face. I'm gonna assume he recognizes that I was one of the people. Okay. I I don't know, but uh, like I'm gonna say I'm sorry to wake you. I don't know what has gone on with these people, but I'd like to request lodgings for the night. He like strokes his beard for a little bit. Well, very well. Thank you very much. And he just doesn't even like open the door anymore. He just kind of like turns around and shuffles away. Oh, walk in. Okay. So you walk in. It's, it's dark inside. He doesn't have any sources of light. There are a couple of small windows. They're mostly shuttered. But you can see there's not another bed. Yeah. There are the chairs. There's the table. Um, there are a couple of blankets kind of folded up on a chest in the corner. So you could presumably make some yeah. sort of bed roll out of those unless you have one with you. Um, I have no idea because this app doesn't tell you things, but um, like I know I have a pack of some sort. Which pack do you have? Burglars. I, I think that's. I don't know. I think most okay. of them. You know, I have heal eight eight points and you heal nine. Okay. Well, we're about to take a long rest. Then. Yeah, you can heal me all you want. I'm about to take a long rest. I can also heal myself. You just I need a good me. person. <laughs> well, like I mean, I just saw someone walking me. Yeah. Camp, like. If I need help, just I want. Case, yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. want my companions to. Be don't know you did it. I'm still just like it. Like, like. What did you cast? Suddenly, like, oh, I feel less like I want to die. Yeah, it's sort of like warmth kind of radiates yeah. through you, and you, you, nobody. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have to like touch anyone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
touch them or anything. I didn't just peep into the tent Tinkle. and be like, Oh, you would have lost your hand. <laughs> oh my god. You just like go over to the sleeping person and like, caress them. Weird. No, oh it's god. really hard on both, so I didn't have to touch them. But that's them. like wiggle too. Yeah, I didn't have to touch them. That's fine. I love it. Oh, thank you for saving that. How are we? Okay, no, it's good. good. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that the message was going to be read, and so I thought, oh, no. Yeah, that freaked me out last time, too. But I guess it's also pretty, like, eye-grabbing that way. So, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, you've gone inside. So, I mean, I guess I'll just... Uh, wait. Are the chairs, like, these kind of chairs or those kind of chairs? Um, They're all made of wood, uh, except for his, which appears to be a kind of a large armchair. Basically, if it looks remotely comfortable, I'm going to grab some blankets and, like, curl up in the chair. It's tall-backed, but it's kind of narrow. You probably... How tall are you? I can't use the you don't get to know that information. Nope. <laughs> that one you have to say. Make something oh. up. Uh, 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 five foot four. Okay. Yeah, at that height, you could probably curl up, put, like, your your head on one arm and, like, fold yourself into the chair a bit and have, like, your legs dangling over the other side. Basically, I'm not looking for, like, super comfortable, but I'm looking for better than outside. Not on the floor or not in the ground. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. You, you feel, you feel like right. you could fall asleep here? That so seems nice. I'm just going to wake up at the crack of dawn. Okay. Fair. How long do you stay awake? A few hours. Okay. Uh, make a perception check. Um, 14. Okay. Um, the first... Okay. No, yeah, 14. I was looking at my dexterity, but my, they're the same, so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. The, the first hour or so passes, you're, you're hearing typical, like, nighttime woodland noises. The, the daytime animals are kind of, was it diurnal? Whatever. Uh, you, you can hear, like, the last vestiges of squirrels and things climbing into trees and, like, small skittering sounds. And towards the end of that hour or so, there's a distinct sort of like woodsy silence where there's some small insect noises and there's the trickling of the stream and a few croaks of frogs, but most of the sound has settled away. Um, how many hours do you say you're stay awake? I'm sorry. A few. Like a few. Three. Okay. So make another perception check. Can I roll up for my robot? Because it can't sleep. So it's just sitting uh, there like... Yeah, what instructions did you give him before you went to sleep? Uh, I know earlier it was protect the tent, so... Um, wake me if there's danger. Okay. Yeah, roll for him then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 16. 15. 15 and 16. Um, my class of perception was 19. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the second hour passes, and you hear the sounds of uh, what would be predator animals, something larger than a squirrel, off they in the distance. They don't, you know, you, once you catch the... the <laughs> sound of them and, and uh, a quiver would notice it too. Once you catch the sound of them, if you spend your time listening to them, it doesn't necessarily appear that they're moving towards you, but you can definitely hear that there are several entities or one large one, maybe uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of noise for one entity, but it would be a reasonable, it would be reasonable to assume that if it were a handful of them, uh, then that's, that would explain why it seems like they're far away, but you can still hear and then, um, so three hours, so a few. Okay, make another check. 19. Eight. Eight. Um, you, you, <laughs> you continue listening, and it sounds to you... Time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It sounds to you like they must have moved off. You're not really able to discern the individual sounds of, like, a pack moving or a large animal moving through the forest. It's all kind of blending together at this point, and your eyes start to droop a little bit. Uh, Quivra is still very aware of this either large or group of things off in the distance. It doesn't appear that they're moving towards you. And for a while, he loses, uh, like, track of them. Uh, maybe they move further away. Maybe they stop moving. And then towards the very end of that hour, he can hear the kind of, like, distinct wrestling that is accompanied, whatever this is. Um, so go ahead and just, are you going to go to sleep at that point? Yeah. It's probably about 1 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay, so you lay down and go to sleep. You've noticed that the robot is up and watching. So it's not that it's reasonable to assume you wouldn't be completely caught off guard. 
yeah. perhaps if something if goes. I know somebody's watching then I might do it for only like two hours instead of three that's fair okay so you go to bed around midnight yeah because I was like he's watching so there's no point in me yeah that's fair that if makes sense giant hunting robot so if something happened he would get up and make a lot of noise yeah so I would wake up yeah because once you're asleep you're kind of relying on like a diminished version of your passive perception um assuming that you would be a light sleeper maybe probably okay fair it's my background so go ahead and make two more perception checks for Cleaver. First one is a 13. And the second one is a 9. 9. Ooh. So um, the next few hours sort of pass. He loses track of the this moving entity. He can picks, picks back up on it after a while. Um, it kind of seems to be shifting around, but nothing that would make him feel like they're you, you're all in danger because it's not getting louder. It's not doesn't seem to be coming closer. Um, towards it, the sun's going to rise around six thirty or so, and towards about five thirty, uh, the sound goes away completely for several minutes. And then after the additional hour before sunrise, I don't know if any of you would be up yet. Um, he can no longer hear them. What time do you wake up? When the sun comes up. Sun comes up. Uh, probably at, right after she starts hearing people like shuffling around. Okay. Because evidently she's a light sleeper. Yeah. The for only tonight, anyway. I roll for her is her waking up. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'm waking up annoyed at that. I mean, eight. Eight or so? Okay, so you're still asleep. What time would you have woken up? Because uh, you went to sleep on. probably around 11. Okay. So, um, you've all gained the benefits of the long rest. You will when you wake up in a couple hours. Yeah, that's so. why I was like, I'm going to stay up late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you get up and you start moving around, uh, going about your morning activities. You notice that the, the tiefling bard is just kind of asleep on the ground. Um, seems to have fallen asleep some point during the night. Uh, I had a nice, like, I sprawled out, like, as much as possible in a tent. Didn't even take up, like, half of it. was just like, good night, everybody. <laughs> it's a two-person tent and you're a gnome. That's yeah. the best part. <laughs> it's basically like a small palatial tent. It's like you. diagonally right in the middle of it. Like, this is my space. Like when you have a king bed all to yourself. Yeah. Just starfish. Um, <laughs> so what do you do in the morning? I pack that up and then put it back into my bag of holding, which probably takes a little bit because I have to like make sure it's wrapped up tight enough to fit into the bag. And yeah. I'm like, all right. And then, Kufra helps you a little bit. Um, yeah. They, everybody else is still sleeping, right? If you got up at the crack of dawn, um, what are you doing in the morning? You, you got up at the crack of dawn. Um, is Merlin up? Not yet. Okay. I'm going to see if I can find some food in his house. Okay. Cool. Make an investigation check. Why are you rolling so happy? Uh, I swear to God. No. The best part about this is that they're level six characters. Like, modifiers should be pretty decent at this point. Nine. Yeah. Nine. You look in the cupboard, and there are scrolls. You look in what might have been a standalone pantry. There aren't any built in. Uh, storage spaces in this it's all it's all old looking it's all made like sort of crudely from wood not crudely like stone age crudely but it's yeah. either very old or it wasn't very well made to begin with <clears throat> um and it's all there's uh there's like an armoire there's there are shelving units like with a cupboard on top there's what might have either been a pantry or a closet there are several chests lying around and you look all the places where food should be they're not there Um, um, so you hear mm -hmm. shuffling going on around inside and, and you're, you're packing the tent up. So at this point you would have woken up when you started breaking yeah. down the tent. I'm crawling it up. She's just going to get up, start packing up her own stuff. No talking. Okay. Um, you spend some time looking around and you don't seem to find anything and you hear just sort of this like, <clears throat> from him lying over on the bed. There's like some shifting sounds and he sits up and he's got that sort of like morning look where his hair is kind of pushed up on one side and it's a bit over his face. And uh, he's drooled a bit into his mustache and it's kind of gross. And he like, what are you doing up so early? 
I always get up this early. Oh, well, I guess you could make yourself useful. Mm. And he like waves his hand and one of the chests pops open and says, food. And he like pulls the blanket back over himself. Of course. Fucking hell. <laughs> Just cursing to herself a little bit, like and there's like really? a, there's a small wood burning stove, um, and like there's utensils already on top of it. Essentially, if like there's something pretty easy to make. Um, I'll make enough for two. Okay, fuck all y'all. Yeah, he's got <laughs> um, he's got like some salted meats in there. Um, oh. There are in in like a little basket, kind of like wrapped carefully in bits of cloth. There are several eggs. Uh, there's some kind of dry, not still yet bread, but it's kind of heading that direction. But there's more than enough for two people. Okay. So, I mean, I'll make food, eat it, and okay. by that time I'll just, you know. I don't know why. If, he, if he's up and eating, then I'll just say thank you. If he's not, then I'll just... Um, it doesn't take you long to cook it. Most of it's not necessarily raw, except for the eggs. So if you were to just kind of, like, heat up the meats in there, then the fat would run off enough to be able to cook the eggs without having to go on, like, a wild search for some sort of butter or yeah. something like that. And um, about the time that you finish kind of preparing it, he, he kind of gets up and, like, fixes his hair and puts his, this long, pointed blue hat mm -hmm. on that kind of folds over at the tip, runs his hand through his mustache and his beard, and just kind of like sits down at the head of the table watching you and he he waves his finger and the tea set that had served you all the day before um they come like flying over and make two places and the little sugar boy comes hopping up and there's like a stack more of he books. does the more i feel like i can't leave <laughs> he's being so hospitable <laughs> And uh, there's a, a stack of books that make, like, almost a staircase around the side of uh, his chair that you luckily didn't disturb. And the little uh, sugar server and milk servers come hopping up the side and come come between the two of you to be available for tea. All right. I guess I'll, you know, sit a bit longer and <laughs> eat and drink tea. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get out before they leave, but I'm just like... <laughs> right. Um, to, anyway, I made it, I guess. True. Yeah, you guys do hear the distinct sounds of, like, um, something being cooked. Uh, like, the kind of, like, crackling sound that accompanies something frying on a stove. Uh, and you hear the shuffling around inside and, like, low voices. Oh, no. When I Okay. I thought it was your bells. No, um, I'm going to leave out. Yeah, I was like, what are you casting? This is me. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Move the mouse, move the mouse. If we're waiting for her to wake up anyway, I'm gonna eat the uh the like tea cakes that I I think I sold tea cakes last time. I'm gonna eat the tea cakes I stuck in my bag. And yeah, you have like a handful of them, like five or six or something. Well I guess you're a gnome, so it's a small yeah. handful, but um, you have a bag of holding. Yeah, I stuck I was just like oh, in the bag. Right. Yeah. You're shoving them in there, I forgot. Oh my god. Um and um because I can construct tiny clockwork devices that make a little fire starter too. Just while we're sitting here, like may as well do something productive and make a little fire starter. Okay. Um, so you hear the shuffling around inside the cottage and a couple of low voices. He starts talking to you, uh, no name, um, about how he's a little disappointed, but he wasn't sure that it would be that easy of a task for you all to go and obtain his spell book, but it's ultimately yeah. not a big deal because he can write another one. Okay. And he starts rambling about this uh, this um, this nearby lord who he has had some trouble with, and uh, he's just in general kind of a not, not a nice person, and um, he's raising as a ward uh, some family member or some something, uh, a young boy who he met once who was quite nice. And he's just kind of, like, making a name breakfast chatter, essentially. Yeah. And um, it wouldn't have quite been 8 o'clock yet. So after you pack up your stuff, what are you doing? Are you going to feed yourself? Um, I mean, I guess I have to. Hmm. Probably good to eat. I don't think I have any food on me, so I may have just have to go out into the forest and set fire to some bunnies. Did you see me go in the house? No. There was, um, well, she was awake. probably so. have like rations because I, 
I mean, that's what I thought too. I can't. Tell it would, if, it, if you have a pass, you have rations. Yeah, I have a dozen years. The only one I think that doesn't have rations is like the diplomats pack. I think maybe. I think so. Or it has like Just one day or two something. For rations. Okay, I guess I'll do my rations. I'm a politician. I don't need them. Right. <laughs> Somebody brings that to me. I have people. For, I have people for that. Uh, so you start digging around in your pack and you're pulling out your breakfast and um, the two of you make a perception check. That bounced all over the place that time, like even more than before. Um, 14? Six. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, oh, and I guess roll for Cleaver too. Okay, maybe he saw something. Yeah. Because I did not. Uh, oh. That was it. 11. Okay. And what did you roll? I got a 12, so it's a 14. 14. Okay. So, yeah, I should have asked what your total was. Sorry. So, you're sitting there and you're digging through your pack and out of the corner of your eyes, you're pulling out like some granola and dried salted beets that you had had with you. You notice um, some, like, it, it would be the flickering of light if you didn't know better. And you look up in the well that's around the side of his house. Uh, it's kind of like just almost like pulsing really softly and slowly with a faint blue glow. I'm going to go check it out. Okay. How do you check it out? Um, I mean... Like trying to figure out if it's magical? Yeah. Okay. Trying to figure out if it's magical. You said it was the well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. there's just like, it's a small, uh, like stone at the bottom well with um, like a little, uh, there's like a crank where there's like some rope attached to it. Clearly yeah. this is where like the, he pulls up water essentially. Oh, it's yeah, nothing. I'm gonna see if it's magic, see if there's anything like at the bottom that I can see that's causing the, the glow. Okay. Uh, so uh, make an arcana check. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 15. Okay. So as you're walking forward, you're kind of taking a look at it. You're, you're measuring uh, the the actual activity, like, oh, well, maybe it, there's a reason for this. Uh, but you get the distinct idea that there is a uh, magic essence to this. It doesn't necessarily seem... So the thing about magic is sometimes you can tell maybe what school it's from or the intent that it might have, depending upon how familiar with it you are. And something that strikes you as odd is that it seems completely neutral, there's no necessarily like there's not necessarily an inherent like uh, sense of like divine presence or of like, a fiendish presence or you don't sense a particular school of magic. Um, and I can't tell whether it's coming from the the well. It's definitely coming water. from the well. Okay. Um, well, you're yeah. I guess you wouldn't necessarily know if it was the well or the water inside at this point, but you can definitely just just tell that as you're approaching it that this is the source of some magic. Um, so then I guess make an investigation check to take a look inside. Fourteen. Fourteen. I keep rolling mediocre and then I'm trying to find modifiers. Yeah. Oh, I um, have three disguise kits. Oh my god, that's so funny. Disguises for days. I've made a lighter. Really. You've made a lighter. Nice. <laughs> um, you you get closer and you can kind of see this this aged uh, sort of like pulley system and, and this waterlogged rope kind of hanging from it. And at the bottom, you see a bucket floating down in, in uh, liquid. It's it's deep enough down that you actually can only see it because of your dark vision. Do you recognize that it's water down there? It doesn't, you don't get the idea or you don't have the impression based on what you're sensing from it that it's specifically the well itself or the water that's magical. You just, you're not able to determine or it might be both at this point. I'm going to try to pull up the bucket to get a closer look at some of the water that's down there just to confirm whether or not it's the water. Okay. So you start, um, you like uh, hook the edge of the rope over a little hook that's on it. You start cranking it up. It's easy enough. It's a bucket of water. Um, and after a few moments, you pull it up. And the water itself looks normal, but it kind of has a vaguely sweet smell. I'm going to taste it. Okay. Do you drink directly from the bucket, or do you, like, have a cup you pour it into? Uh, probably just, like, cut my hands a little bit. not going to okay. drink from the bucket like a barbarian. That's fair. So, and actually, that doesn't really matter. It was more just me curious how she would approach the situation. <laughs> so, um, so you're, you're getting the distinct impression that there's some sort of magic to this, and you, you draw the bucket up, and you get this, this kind of sweet smell to it. And it's not sweet, like, 
rotting meat sweetness, like that initial smell of it turning. It's not sweet, like sugar sweet, but different. Anyway, yeah. distinction. Um, yeah. But it's kind of like florally no. almost. And you take a sip of it, and it still tastes normal, which is odd Kaya. because... We're just not <laughs> Oh, animals. I love animals. I really do, actually. I'm just also being sarcastic. Um, oh, she's just obnoxious. <laughs> really? Oh, my God. Wow. She just wanted to sniff the threshold, Dee. The ghost. Oh, no. I think there's a bug between the panes. Okay. She's going through something specific. Come on, sit with me. So, um, you, you take a sip of it. It tastes bizarrely unremarkable for having this kind of good smell to it. But as you're swallowing it, there's a sort of like pleasant warmth to it. Uh, roll a percentage die. Oh, percentage die. I, I probably have looked up and see her doing this. And like, uh, Yeah, you you didn't catch what was going on at first, but she kind of got up and wandered away and it did pique your interest uh, with your initial. 30%? Yeah. 30%? You, you need to roll two. Do I? Yeah, the yeah. V10 as the second number. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, but yeah, you roll the both D10. of them okay. at the same time. I thought this was the right one. I was just like, yeah, yeah. it's 30 and then the second one. 32. 32. So you drink it and there's a sort of like pleasant warming feeling as it goes down. Not like an alcohol burn, just like as if it were warm, but it was cold to your lips when you drank it. And you, it just feels really nice. And you gain three temporary hit points. Heck yeah. So you're watching and uh, which form are you in? Are you still in the same one? Um, well, she probably would have been back to tiefling to sleep, and then she probably would have been the dark-haired one in the morning. Okay. So, the the sorceress that you're accompanying, who calls herself Livia, uh, is in the initial form that you met her in. She kind of gets up and kind of wanders with purpose away towards this well, and fidgets with it a bit, and draws up this water, and you see her taste from it. Um, do you react in any way, or emote, or are you just sort of like, I mean, she might emote with her face a little bit in the kind of, like, oh. sort of way, but not, like, you know, whoa! Yeah, 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 obviously. Yeah. That, that would be out of character for her. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you do notice, it, since you're paying attention, that she kind of made a face when she drank it, and it doesn't look bad. It just kind of looks a little confused. I want to go see what it, what's going on, then. Okay. Go look around the well as well. Look. Try to like look over the side. And she'd be lowering the bucket as she's walking up. Yeah. Okay. So you walk up and um, how are you going to take a look at it? It is kind of like, you almost didn't even notice it at first, but every couple of seconds, there's just kind of like this vague pulse of light, blue light. It's really almost more of a shimmer, just so uh, discreet. Um... Well, I, I guess I'd probably assume it's magic. I have like a five intelligence or a mm -hmm. 20 intelligence. Well, five, well yeah, you could, I mean, five, I have a 20 intelligence. <laughs> magic is pretty common and you could easily yeah. assume something, a yeah. well pulsing with light is magic. You would have to check it to try to determine what type. Um, um, I can cast identify. I have to do it as a ritual, but I can cast identify. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. It, it's going to take like 10 minutes to do the ritual. I love the idea that you two aren't communicating just quite yet. So yeah. you're like lowering this bucket. He just kind of like walks up. And are you going to like sit There's down no. to like draw like, out the room? And stuff? I like kind of like stand on my toes and look over the side and then like sit down and start drawing in the dirt. Like, oh, okay, let's see. I'm just watching with complete fascination. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you sit down and you kind of prepare the space and you begin drawing yeah. runes and symbols and figuring out the uh, like orientation of north and south so you can make sure that you draw everything in the proper pattern and you spend the next several minutes at, at this point you would have uh Jeannie, you would have finished breakfast and he would have he doesn't really say anything distinct like i said it was kind of a name conversation about this nearby lord and this nice young boy who he met once who this this lord was uh like raising him as a ward and he was not necessarily actively mistreating him but just wasn't very kind to him and then you finish breakfast, and he. All right, I'm gonna thank him for his hospitality and head out. Get the hell out of here. 
he nods and he sits back and he strokes his beard and he waves his finger and the dishes kind of like get up and float over to a bin on the side and he says, well, good luck to you. Thank you. And the, you hear the sound of like the, like skittering of claws, but it's really, it's really faint off in the corner of the room. And there's a small wooden like birdhouse almost, but it kind of looks a little odd and a little flap pops open on the front. And a very tired looking owl kind of crawls his way out and blinks and looks at you and preens for a second and flutters over to the table and starts picking up, pecking up crumbs from the bread. So you leave and close the door behind you? Yeah. Okay. What's up, bitches? No. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. No, I, I love the idea of the irreverent road. Um, it's probably, it's probably like 730. Um, she would have gotten a short rest at this point. So if you're just sleeping until you feel rested, she could be waking up now. But if you wanted to. I want to do a long rest so I can get my yeah. back. Yeah. Well, I, I do long rests like six to eight hours. Okay. So, so I'm about waking up now. Exactly. Yeah. It was a little after midnight when you went to sleep. So this is, yeah, you're, you're kind of like stirring. and you hear the door close and you, you roll over and you can see the form of this tiny uh, woman who you, you know, cast a spell on last night, who, whose name you still don't know, it occurs to you. And uh, off in the distance, you do notice uh, Olivia kind of standing and looking curiously at um, Stokely, who is sitting on the ground, like tracing something into the dirt. We're playing hopscotch. Like tracing with one hand and then eating like a tea, tea cake with the other hand. Like. <laughs> I, I know what I'm doing. It's fine. Getting breakfast in. Mm -hmm. So um, you you finish up uh, drawing. You're confident that everything is set to uh, finish casting the spell, and you do. And what you find out is this is a well of fortune. Okay. And it has an enchantment on it that can be good or uh, wheel or woe. Uh, it just kind of depends. It, there's no way to really tell what will happen, but you know that drinking from the well can grant you a boon, can temporarily bolster uh, your skills or your vitality. It could also drain it. It could um, it could not necessarily horribly uh, horribly um, like damage you, but it could be persistently aggravating for a short time and everything you you would know that whatever it is that happens wouldn't last for more than about 24 hours okay um but i'm going to i'm going to drink it too i'm going to pull up the yeah okay it. oh all the cool kids are doing yeah Jerry. so you it's a little bit difficult for you you have cool to kind too. of climb up onto Singular. the Singular, stones yeah. to hook the rope around the um Metal hook on the play system, but you're able to do it. If I see him doing it, I probably Okay. Yeah, you saw him finish the last bit of tracing in the dirt, and he kind of sat there for a moment and closed his eyes and opened them back up and got up. Because I just need water, so I'm just going to drink it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird what they're doing. If you, as you're walking over, you do see that every couple of seconds there's this kind of like shimmer. Um, small pulse of a light blue, a light blue light. But what? Yeah, as you're approaching, sure, make an arcana check. And you, at this point, you've walked out, and she's kind of like getting up yeah. and heading over there. So your yeah, attention is drawn. Oh, so um, arcana check isn't exactly like the identify spell, but as you're walking over, you can you from the cottage a few steps away, you can feel the magical energy to it. You do know that it is neutral. Um, and doesn't necessarily hint of any particular school of magic, but you have encountered things like this before, and you know that when something appears neutral like this, it's that it's not inherently um, divine or good or fiendish or evil, um, but it can kind of be both in turn, and it's a little bit chaotic in how that might manifest. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. you take a sip of water. Yeah. If you pull it up, do you drink from the bucket itself or from your hand or from a cup? Uh, I do my hands, so if I try to tip the bucket, I'll probably just spill it on myself. That's fair. So, okay. take a sip. Uh, uh roll a percentage five. No, I did. I just no, I mean, I meant roll it against the top. Oh, it was? 
I don't know what Well, it hit your other dice. Oh. It was on the zero. Oh, it's a 20. Exactly. Exactly 20? Exactly 20? Yep. Oh. I really she thought she, that yeah, she was dying or something. She slid and just clicked on the wall. Oh, she <laughs> slid like head first into a wall before. She's fine. So, um, you take a sip of it, and yeah, as you're pulling it up, you. You look at it, and it looks like normal water, but when you have the bucket in front of you, you get this sort of distinct, almost yeah. fruity smell. Yeah. Like um, if someone were to cut up strawberries and leave them in water, this is what it would smell like. And you take a sip, and it's got this sort of like pleasant, cool, almost minty feel as it goes down. It's quite refreshing. And being that you woke up and didn't have anything to brush your teeth with, it actually, you know, it feels quite nice uh, going down, and you sit back for a moment, and this coolness sort of settles in your stomach, and you just feel like you can really take on the day. Um, so you have a deed of inspiration. Yay! Sorry, I'm trying to get her to shut up. It's okay. But okay. growling is better than barking. That's fine. Um, so did you, are you beginning to lower the bucket? You do see um, Oriana kind of making her way over, looking curiously at what you guys are doing. Well, I had started to, but like she comes over, I'll just like leave it like halfway. And so he, he like starts to put it down and he looks up and he sees you and he leaves it. So it's not necessarily like, it's like, haha, I'm putting this away. He's like, oh, you're coming, you can have some too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You, oh, I keep forgetting that that's there. You um, you roll it up, and as you're bringing the water up, you, you can just, like, inherently d feel the 80. You feel the magic emanating from it, and as you pull it up, it kind of smells. This is really weird for water because it looks normal, but it smells a little bit like salted meat. Pork, maybe? Um, that distinct sort of, like, sharp saltiness that pork would have. And it's it kind of off-putting a little bit at first, but you... How do you drink it? I, I'm not gonna pour it on myself. I'm but from the bucket? Yeah, I'm just gonna like scoop my hands. Oh, your hands? Okay. Yeah. So you set it down on the edge. The stones are wide enough that you can easily set it down on the edge to get a handful out. And you scoop your hands into it and you take a sip. It tastes unflavored, like normal water. It appears to be of a vaguely cool temperature, like water would be coming from under the ground. It kinda has a weird aftertaste. Hmm. That was weird. It just smells funny. Nothing happened. Nothing you can feel. Water smells funny. I roll low. So when I design things, it's always backwards. <laughs> But nothing terrible happens. And you 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 remember from just kind of like sensing the aura of the magic coming from this that it could it could have there could have been something to this, but it doesn't seem to have affected you or you don't feel different. You don't sense any magic within yourself. Could I drink again? Because I don't think anything happened. Yeah. I'll do that. Uh, 77. 77. So you... Not that different. Hmm. <laughs> you think about it for a second, you're like, maybe I didn't drink enough, or maybe I just need another shot of this. And you take another mouthful, and this time it tastes like it has gone so stale. The sort of stagnant water that's in like a marsh almost, and there's almost even that sort of moldy uh, taste to it. And it's even a little slimy, and you almost aren't able to swallow it. But you're thinking, okay, this is like a test or something, maybe. So you do. And you just kind of feel a little sick to your stomach. You're going to have disadvantage on your next roll. Okay. <laughs> Would they have said anything at this point? Nobody has said anything. No, y'all are just silently drinking yeah, water. Yeah, we're like bad people. So they're like, oh, cool. And we just drink it. I like, yeah, so just don't need to communicate. It's like some kind of like, okay, but, oh, we're all just silently drinking this magic water. And it's like. Okay, but we said it's like visibly has something going on with it. 
Um, yeah, if understand. you're you're okay. watching, if you have an approach, yeah. you're just kind of watching from a distance, and every few okay. seconds there is a there is a visible sort of like shimmer, little pulse of light blue light, and you you see him finish whatever he's doing, drawing in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. Are you what kind of rogue are you? Assassin uh, rogue? Are you arcane trickster? No. Okay, so you you are probably not very magically inclined or familiar. And so he's he's drawing in the dirt, and he climbs up, and he pulls up this water, and he takes a drink, and he kind of stands there for a second, smiles a bit to himself, and just kind of, like, stands up a little straighter. Like, you're not sure why exactly, but he just does. Um, and he starts to lower it, and then Olivia approaches and pulls the water back up, and she takes one drink, looks a little blank, takes a second one, and then... Makes Wait, a face. Olivia or Oriana? Oriana. Oriana. Oriana does that. <laughs> you didn't see how Olivia reacted where she's yeah. even had anything yet. Um, so that happened to Oriana and she just, just kind of looks say, unpleased at the moment. I'm just going to say kind of to myself. Oh, you're not going to emote then? That's fine. You can specify that. Yeah. She she oh. took a drink. Well, uh, make a... What would that be? Yeah, sure. Yeah. One. I'm no. both proficient in both, so it doesn't matter. I would say performance because yeah, that's inherently the same modifier either way. Yeah, that's acting, so. Oh yeah, there's ice. It's kind of old though. Did it taste bad? What? The ice? Oh, the real water? Did the real water taste bad? No. Um, yeah, that's fine. Twenty-eight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you, you see her take one drink. Blank expression. Take a second drink. Blank expression. Do you do you like put it back down in the well or? Yeah. She sets it at the end of the rope and starts lowering it back. Probably about halfway with it. Yeah. I'm just gonna quietly to myself say fuck it and go drink some, I guess, because. I mean, if nothing else is water, right? They're they're clearly not dying, so. Yeah, no one's died yet. <laughs> Don't say that. I've been rolling low tonight. <laughs> I don't um, know how more okay, generic I, of a character okay. I can make. I will say I'm not going to kill you with the well. That's my next roll, so wouldn't I have disadvantage on that roll? No, that's what gave you disadvantage. Oh, no, I said attack roll, I think. Oh, I thought you just said You just roll. said roll, but... You could have yeah, missed. fine. Have, have disadvantage, then. There you go. That, yeah, if I didn't specify, I didn't specify. That did happen before she drank the well, though. No, no, no. no this right is, after, it was after. Yeah. She's trying to mask her reaction to it. Um, well played. 22. Yeah, she still didn't. <laughs> I have, like, I have a plus 11. Oh, I play lore bars. I fully yeah. understand. No worries. You're good. All right, so. I was I'll... making a performance check for something on my, I'm playing level 15 bar in another campaign, and I'm playing, uh, I was making a performance check for an archfey, and we were all, like, a little scared that we were going to die, and I rolled a 32. Oh, my God. And I was like, well, I guess that was all right. <laughs> so, so. Okay. don't worry. Anyway, continue. So I'll go ahead and drink. Okay. So what are you guys doing after you've all, are you just kind of like standing around looking at each other? Just silently <laughs> all drinking and then bye. Why do I always end up DMing for the non-vocal group? <laughs> Why? They're not talking to me. I'm not talking to anybody else. No, I, I literally, like, like I was my like, fire finished making my lighter. Like, okay. all right. Like, I was literally going to make no name say like two words the whole campaign but I'm the only one talking <laughs> so I yeah. feel like I got a so station they to me, so. That's what I know so, so she talks to herself now apparently so he drinks and he after a few moments sits back down and starts tinkering with whatever he's tinkering with again uh, what is uh, what is Olivia doing right now just standing and observing yeah I mean the only reason she hasn't left it is because she's mildly like Curious about it. Yeah, she's mildly interested. Like, otherwise she would have just left. That's fair. Um, so yeah, so Stokely is sitting on the ground, uh, tinkering with something. Quivra is standing nearby, just kind of keeping an eye out. Uh, Olivia is just kind of watching the scene, and uh, Oriana had just lowered the bucket in the water. So you you approach. Nobody says anything. And you pull the bucket back up. Um, go ahead and make a percentage roll. I don't actually know how to read these. I know we just went over so that with her. One is a one is a tens place and one is a one. It'll okay, be so 49. 49. Okay. So um, you you're pulling the bucket up 
and do you know what it smells like when it's about to rain? Petrichor? Yeah. So you're pulling it up, and it, it's got this sort of like earthy water smell, but there's a little bit more to it, almost like you suddenly get the impression that it's going to rain, and you kind of glance up, and there, there aren't any storm clouds in the sky, and it's a little odd. And um, how do you drink from it? Um, I guess I'll just... Okay. Everybody else is doing it, right? Yeah, I mean, sure, I don't have water. anything. Yeah. I'm not going to go dig out a cup. That's fair. So you dump your hand in, and it uh, it feels a little warm to the touch, which is kind of odd because it's underground, and this is sort of the beginnings of autumn, and you would think that water kind of deep down to ground, because you're pulling it up, you look in, and you can't even see the bottom of it. You just hear the splashing sounds of water. It's just it's a little odd. It registers on your senses, and you take a drink. And it it tastes kind of spicy. Uh, not like heat spicy, like if somebody were to make a flavorful broth. It's chai water. <laughs> a little bit, it's kind of peppery. Yeah, a little bit peppery. And it's just, okay, that's odd. And you swallow it and there's that kind of like almost pinch at the back of your throat when something's almost a little too spicy mm -hmm. and you're like, you might cough on it, but you don't. And you wait for a second. You kind of feel you kind of feel like you like you woke up and you had a good stretch. You haven't gotten to do that yet. You haven't limbered up, but your your muscles kind of relax a little bit, and you just feel like you you are warmed from the inside out. And you, um, what is the skill you have the highest modifier in? Still, still, yeah. Um, for your uh. For your next two stealth rolls, it without additional plus two. Ooh, hey, nice. You just feel like kind of extra limber, like you're cat like almost today. This warmth from the inside. So you're all standing around quietly around this obviously kind of like shimmery water fountain, quietly yeah. drinking one after another. Yeah. Where do you proceed? I should have I brought the well. I have a well there. <laughs> I still need to paint our minis. I haven't even painted mine. Ah! Honey, shut up. <laughs> um, we head now, we're heading back to town. Yeah, what was it that we came from? I know we were all summoned, but. Um, you were all nearby. There, there are a couple of places you could have been. It would have depended upon where your character t tended to stay. There is an inn right outside the city. Alicon itself is a pretty big, um, pretty big town. So there's a there's like an inner wall where there's a high high stone wall. This is obviously sort of the first line of fortifications. But there's also uh, a like living around the city walls has cropped up uh, several houses where just kind of like there were enough people that they had to bleed outside of the wall. And so there's a second wooden, less fortified um, area. There are inns throughout. There uh, also was an inn right outside of town, uh, maybe like a mile away. You're only about two hours walk from the town. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get her to not be obnoxious. That's okay. Um, you, you know that if you were to head straight for town, it would be about a two hours walk from where you're at. You also know that... Uh, well, actually, you make a. Where are you from? Oh, me? Sorry. I'm yes. Uh, Sleeping Beauty World. I don't know what it's called. Sleeping Beauty I'm World? Here. You're from here. So you would know. Oh, I have a regional map, which I guess would be this area, because this is where we are. <laughs> yeah, if you have a regional map. you And what is, what's on your regional map? Uh, it's it's just an area. It's, it's just a regional it's map. It's the one it's, that Merlin really showed us. No, I, it's from my starting inventory. I just have well, a, he also showed us the map. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I wrote that myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, Ohenberg is Sleeping Beauty, by the way. Oh, what bird? O-H-E-N-B-E-R-G. Ohenberg. O-O-H-E. Unless I'm reading that incorrectly. O H E N B E R G, Owenberg. Owenberg is probably better than Owenberg. Owenberg. Okay, I'm from here. You're from here, Alabama. So you would know that um, there's a small kind of wayward in the opposite way of town, probably about an hour's walk from here. There's also a Lord's Castle, um, about half an hour uh, away from town as well. I don't know if you would be familiar with them. 
You you would know that they the the family the I Pelinar. Perform, like specifically in in like, courts. And okay. Yeah. Then you've probably performed there. Um, the the Lord himself uh, isn't much for music, but his his um, like staff in court are. Uh, he's kind of like an an old portly not old. He's a middle aged portly man. He's got red hair. He's got a bad temper. Um, he has a son who is dull as rocks. Uh, Sir Kay, uh, you, you, he seemed amused by your performances, but it also seemed like he didn't fully grasp them. Uh, he's not intelligent. He's not cultured enough. Mm -hmm. And, um, there, that's the only family, so to speak, that lives there. There are a lot of staff members. He has, a uh, nice, under his command, he has um, a retinue that follows him, and he has a uh, ward. He calls the ward. The ward? Mm -hmm. The ward, the ward? That's unfortunate. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mentioned the castle. I've probably, I've been in it. Mm -hmm. so. so, you say, you know, the closest thing would probably be the nearby castle for Lord Pelinor. And, um, what, what do you describe about it? Just that there's this lord that has a castle and I've performed there before. He takes services for, um, from like weary travelers in trade and things like that. Yeah. Okay. And I would have, I don't know if this is pushing it. When I would have gone there, I would have tried to familiarize myself with the layout. But yeah, I don't that's know fair. how much I would know, but I would try to know learn as much as possible while I'm there because that's part of my life. Back. Okay, yeah. I mean, there were big, obviously would be areas that would have been off uh, off limits for you. You would have been confined to what would be sort of like the when you're a traveling performer. If a lord puts you up, you're typically in the common room, like either sleeping in the thrushes on the ground or in your own bedroom. So you would have been pretty much confined to in the castle itself, the general hallways, um, the the common room and um, like what would be their courtroom. Although he's not like a great lord, so this isn't a large castle, but you would have been able to see the outside very yeah. well. There's a moat. Um, he does have a drawbridge and a moat. Yeah, if I had been able to, like I would have snuck around is what I'm saying. Okay. If I had been able to. There's a good amount of staff and they're all a little distrustful, but you probably could have made it down to the kitchens. His kitchens are almost like like a dungeon themselves they're a little underground um and there are quite a few staff members so there's always work going on down there but because of the general din you probably you probably could have made it into there and maybe on a couple of hallways and into a few of the um like unused guest rooms maybe into the servants quarter so okay. you would have like a vague understanding of probably like a quarter of the layout of okay. the castle yeah so i would have done as much as i could yeah like while i was there with, with without like yeah, without alerting. That exactly. I was yeah. yeah. Not wanting to go far enough to risk being caught, then that's yeah. probably what you could have safely found out after you'd been there for a couple of days and they weren't completely ill at ease with you. Yeah. So so you just suggest that there's there's a lord that might need help. Yeah, I don't say that I sleep. Yeah. But I say that I'm familiar with um, some parts of the castle. And I'm familiar with the lord. Okay. I mean, seems like as good a plan as any, which we have none, so it's something. At least strangers who have come together and are like, well, we're here now, and I guess there's well, we not really a lot we can do. We wouldn't have to sleep on the ground again. Mm -hmm. And as she's describing this lord, you do remember the conversation, sort of like idle conversation that um, Merlin was having with you this morning, Jeannie, and you you recognize it to be the same sort of place. And he did kind of offhandedly mention that they had been having trouble with um, like some, some uh, wolves in the area that were um, taking like, uh, they were encroaching upon like farm and ranch land and taking livestock. And there uh, have also, there's also been some banded activity in the area and he had been unwilling to send his knights too far to go look into it. Um, he's not a very giving man. Uh, but he had sort of kind of uh, been having trouble with that, and it was something that, like, Merlin offhandedly mentioned. 
trying to decide if I would mention it anything. So you're standing there. You're all just kind of like standing there. And she's like, there's this lord. And we could go there. Maybe mm -hmm. he'll have something for us to do. And you don't say anything. That's so fine. They're making this as hard on me as I'm possibly could be. No, I'm literally like, I don't want to do this to you. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. But she wouldn't play your character. Do it. <laughs> you, you have already established that she speaks as little as possible. You know what? Point. Cryptically, uh, or now I can't remember. I I came up with wording. What was it? Um, wording for what? Or just like. Like you like nonchalantly mention like oh he might have work for us to do or yeah. something like that. Yeah, okay. like not anything committal. All right. So you suggest it. She gives some sort of indication like yeah, it seems like a good idea. He might have something for us if we're traveling together now. Wink, <laughs> wink, nudge, nudge, not. Say animal, say animal. So shall we go? Then? Sure, and I pull down the hat to get on to the robot. So like the front hat drops down, and I sit on the seat in the that front. That is such an image. So now I'm eye level with everybody. It's mobile suit Quivra. Yeah. Instead of mobile suit Kantum. <laughs> um, yeah, so who is leading the way? You have a map. You're from the area. Um, you suggest where to go. It's up to you guys. Because I know where the castle is. Okay. All right, so you're you're not familiar super with this particular area of the forest, but you know generally which direction to go. So go ahead and make a survival check. That's wisdom, right? Yeah. Yes. I probably should have made it. Fourteen. Okay. You you take a second to orient yourself. You look which way the sun is, and you're like the road. The road was definitely this way. You're pretty Feel confident. Free to, like, check me my way. Do you have your map out? Yeah. <laughs> you already said you pulled your map out. So she kind of like looks around. Not a lot is said. And whatever. I'll take charge then. And turns around and starts walking. And she's going exactly the right direction. Okay. So you. Uh, I'll follow my map. And if she starts veering off one way, I'll be like, it's this way. And start, <laughs> yeah. go, start walking off that way. Okay. So um, as you're traveling, you do. You do see the markers that had been left for you previously that had kind of led you here. So you, you see the first one and then you're you, okay. I, I I was right. I was I was mostly sure of myself before, but now I know I'm right. And um, you continue walking and after um, I think it had taken a couple hours for you guys to get there, and after about an hour and fifteen minutes or so, you come to that same river. Um, the water intensity is just as terrible. You do know now though that it's only how tall is Cleaver? Like seven feet. It's only like six and a half feet deep. There's, oh, thank you. Sorry. I'm really bad at this. Um, oh no, I'm paying attention. It was like paying attention to the computer. Yeah. So I have to stare at it basically. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing when we were at my apartment actually. I was like, mm -hmm. but you would, I think whoever it was at you. I was sitting was, next to it. So oh, it was, was like, I would see yeah. it. I like, there'd be, it'd go dark next to me. So be like, okay. Yeah. Somebody's always watching it. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm going to one of these times when you do this, I'm gonna pick up that you're actually like indicating that Why I don't do. Why this when I got you? I'll do the pencil. Okay. So but you used to say, hey Katie, the computer. Hey Katie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you keep an eye yeah, on I, it. Yeah, I'm I trying. I'm gonna interrupt you. Yeah. So that's why I wasn't like saying. Uh, yeah, no worries. Um so like <laughs> the screen. <laughs> Um, so you come to the same sort of river that you had come to before. Now that you've crossed it and Queen fell in and walked across, you know that it's only about six and a half feet deep. It is pretty fast moving. He's quite heavy. So whether or not you all would be able to walk across or swim across as easily as he did is kind of dependent upon your particular skill sets. Um, the fallen tree is still there, but it is definitely worse for the wear, uh, as, as it was when you crossed over it last time. And I, I think there was... Is there another... No, you guys were devising another way to get to cross. It is only 15 feet. Yeah. So if your strength is at least 15, you could take a running leap if you get at least 10 feet of movement. And you'd be mine able to jump not. in. So mine's yeah. a 14, but I have jack of all trades. Well, it's your base modifier, not like me. I know, but like... Anything. If I roll for it, I would still get the bonus for it. I would say that you're look you're looking at it and you're like, this is the very edge. Even if I fell into the water, I probably wouldn't be swept away because there's a bit of a bank. 
But with a really good role, you could probably put a little extra effort in with a really good role. With putting a little bit extra effort into it, you probably could make it across at worst, um, just at your normal uh, like running and jumping, you probably would maybe get like your feet wet a little bit. You might slip, but you would be far enough past that you wouldn't be swept away. Would it be feasible to catch me, or cast Mage Hand across it so that if I fall on something, I can like... Mage Hand can only support 10 pounds of weight. So you would have something to grab onto, yeah. but it would probably move with you because you wouldn't be able to put more than 10 pounds of resistance on it. Mm -hmm. So it could steady you if you yeah, like start to I'm slip. Saying, you could yeah. grab onto it, but it I would need to, like pull me up. And then, like, yeah, yeah. Just, just to steady yourself yeah. so you don't slip. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, because that's thirty feet you have for me, Chan, right? Yeah. So you, I think so. I, yeah, I think it. I think it can be within thirty feet of you, or maybe even more. I but, that. but at least fifteen. Should, I don't think that it would be. If confined. you have a strength of twenty, you can. Or not twenty. Well, it is twenty. But if you have a strength of twenty, you just jump feet. Like, for a lot. In yeah, unless you're like a natural one, essentially. 30 feet, yeah. So so you cast Mage Hand and the spectral, what color is your... I think it specifies the color, but you can make it whatever color you want. I like colorful magic. Oh, um, pink. Pink? Okay. So this sort of spectral pink hand appears on the other side, and it's got its, like, hand out to you. Like, it's waiting for you to uh, take it because, you know, drama. So you're going to take a running leap. Okay. Make an athletic stroke. Um, because you know that this is a distance that you can jump just based on your general level of athleticism, it's, it's not that you are not confident in your ability to make it over. It's that you're not confident in your ability to make it over without slipping or getting wet. So you take a, you take, you know, a few steps back, you get uh, at least a 10 foot running head start and you just, and none of you have said anything. So you've all kind yeah. of standing there looking at it and she takes a few steps back and just takes off running. Oh, and oh, oh okay. And there's a little bit of mud at the edge of the bank, and so you don't get quite as much momentum as you thought, and you, you're you're starting to land, and you just know you're going to splash a little bit. And so make an acrobatics check. Okay, I have to ask, on like a scale of 1 to 10, how uncomfortable is this party to you? Very uncomfortable. That's like a 10. I come from, um, I come from like the 10? Okay. The Court of Miracles, where everyone's like really talking loud. and like yeah. loud all the time. It's weird. I just feel bad so for you. I, you make it, it um, and you don't slip. You're able to grab onto your mage hand, and it doesn't even necessarily look bad, but you definitely land on like the side of the bank. You're like probably a little bit more than ankle deep in the water. No incident. I'm casting precipitation to clean myself. There you go. That's yeah. fair. You guys have all witnessed her just leap pretty gracefully. Across, splash a little bit, clean yourself up. I tie myself to my robot and like I tie it, like I tie it. Oh, I have to feet her up, so I tie it so it's like I if well you'll be underwater if you sit in the thing, but remember before oh, no. you were I'm up. gonna have him pick me up like this okay. and then like run. Okay. So I'm above the water, water, even if he falls in, I'm still above the water. Okay. But I'm tied on just in case something happens. So he's just gonna walk straight across, right? Because he doesn't need to breathe or anything. He's a robot. He's yeah. a robot. Yeah, and his head will be above. So I, yeah. he's holding me above his head. And this is like. Yeah, you'll be fine. I can like really, sit. I can like sit so actually and just hold me here. And it's like, all right. That's such a cute See you guys. Let's just go. So he's really heavy and there is a lot of mud. So it takes him a little bit. He's kind of like slurping down the side and sinking a little bit. But he slowly makes his way across. Just kind of. He's heavy enough that he can't be swept away. Um, he's totally sitting or standing, I guess, on his hands. And he uh, stops for a minute and kind of folds you up with one hand and steadies himself to like walk out the other side so he doesn't slip. When, and he, when he holds him with one hand, I'm going to mage hand to steady him to make sure that he doesn't fall. Okay, so you're you're kind of standing there on one hand. You know, he signaled to you that you need to step over so he can climb out, and this pink spectral hand comes floating over to you. Put a hand on it. It's like okay. all right. I'm, and as I'm good. As Quiver is kind of climbing out, it's, it is a little bit jostly, not terrible, mm -hmm. um, but you definitely feel safer for having something to hold on to to steady yourself. All right. I just have to put me down and we're out of the water. And then I gotta time myself. I don't know what you guys are gonna do. No, no one asked for help, so how Sorry. long is this? Um, I mean, she just took a running leap. It took him a few a few minutes. It's only a 15 feet okay. wide. Well, I ask because I don't know how far you can jump, but 
You're, you Part can, of my rogue thing is I can jump dex mod feet further. So if you dex mod feet further? Plus whatever your dex yeah, mod so you, what you can, like, if you have a strength score of 10, you can jump 10 feet successfully with a 10-foot running head start outside of combat. So what is your strength score? Uh, 12. So you can jump 12 feet. So you're just a few feet, feet shy. What is 16. your dex mod? So cool, you can take so a running leap. Yeah. Bye. So you take a running leap. You know this is something you can do. You jump. Make an acrobatics check to see how graceful it is. And I'm also doing mage hand. Pink spectral oh, hand is waving at the edge. Nice. <laughs> so you, you watch this go on and you kind of think to yourself, watch how it's done. <laughs> take a few steps back. Take a few giant uh, steps running. You leap. And you're all watching. And it's actually just effortless. Leaps into the air. Lands on the other side. Shakes your pink hand. Yeah. Not bad. actually. No? Okay. <laughs> kind of like high five your pink hand and then just go walking. <laughs> okay, that'll do. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like this. And you're just like... <laughs> and that leaves Olivia. Okay. Right. So I love how nobody's helping each other either. It's so yeah, funny. they all just took off. So I was like, okay, it's, it's fine. Dude, you're, like, you're actually helping everyone. Yeah. I'm, I'm lying. I meant like throwing something been. across. Yeah, I'm helping. You're helping. That, that was my show of appreciation. I have five. And I clapped. Yes. Okay. Would okay, okay. I be able to use? Are we actually getting semi-friendly? What is this? I mean, you didn't kill me while I slept, so. Yeah. I mean, if you were gonna kill me, it probably would have been last night. So, and I did attack you, and you didn't kill me in my sleep. So. Yeah, I just said what the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> so. But you healed me immediately, so I was like, okay. Can you? If you haven't killed me yet, you probably. Tend to do friendship. <laughs> yeah. I will pop you two upside the head. I just try every to time she opens her mouth, like, 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 I'm like, okay, they're done talking. Tend to do friendship. Yay! Okay, can I use you? This is completely DM discretion. Can I use Ray of Frost to like freeze a portion of the water to try and walk across? Is that something that would be possible? Do you think? I think there's a specific spell that actually lets you create ice that is like able to walk across, but you Flavor. could potentially make an intelligence check. Okay. Just make a roll and add your intelligence modifier. It's my intelligence. Okay. Fifteen. You're looking at it. This is really fast moving water. It's not quite cold enough outside for this to create a meaningful surface, but maybe if you were to do it on the remains of that stump that was kind of decaying, since it's already a solid surface, you're just kind of creating a hard shell on the outside and that might make it sturdier. Okay. If you put it on the top, you might slip, but if you put it on the bottom then maybe you could walk across the wood and then as it crunches in you're you've just got a little bit more stability i mean and uh worst case i do still have the mage hand i can shoot it away la, 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 la. i can just do what i did the last time and like have the deck of support okay but yeah I'm and that's a cantrip gonna... right Maybe yeah yeah can't trip both of them. okay i'm so gonna do that then. me how many rays do you get at six level two i think it would be it would either be two or it would be stronger. Yeah, it's either That's more. Um, is there a fair chance? She wrote 2d8, so I think it's two d eight. What are you looking for? I can look, I have the app open right now. I can just, it'll be faster if I just. Yeah. Race. If I race to the answer. Yeah, it's just 2d8 instead of 1d8. Okay, so you you know that you're pretty far, powerful. Um, Go ahead and just make the attack roll to see how accurate you are with it. Ooh, that's a 25. Hey, okay. So you take a second and you're like, you know, I've been practicing this ray of frost and I know this is uh, pretty good. I'm pretty, I'm pretty familiar with this spell. And you're actually able to, despite standing on top of the bank, you're able to cast it in such a way that it kind of hits the middle and bottom side of it. So it kind of sweeps over it and looks like there's a piece of shell on it. Seems okay. like it's probably better than it was, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna try to walk across it, and I'm gonna cast Mage Hand just to hold on to for okay, support. Okay, so you've got one Mage fall. Hand. Yep. Are you gonna cast yours again? Because she can have 20 pounds. Well, that's what happened last time, too, yeah. but that was because Mage Hand couldn't keep me balanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think I should be... Oh, yeah, I forgot. You've already got it cast yeah, if you I wanted to. 
What's yeah. What's so, crossing streams? It's the same. Don't cross the streams. Oh, it's the same one. See, so you're still okay. over. Yeah. Okay, yeah. See, so I still have a pass. So. Yeah, you hear bells jingling and you see a, a spectral yeah. hand floating over oh, at you. Okay. Do you wait for it or you head out? Uh, if I tell her to drop it, she'll okay. growl. She starts walking, but she doesn't look upset by it. Yeah, like there in case she starts like. It's just gonna make its way over and I have to be on the other side. Okay, so go ahead and make um an acrobatics check. Or athletics. A athletics or acrobatics. You're just walking. It's it's just a bit of a yeah ish surface. <laughs> Oh. She hit the fireplace. All right, so acrobatics or athletics? Um, I didn't think she would be this much of a problem. Okay. No, you're fine. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Ooh, so we're gonna do acrobatics because okay. acrobatics is what. Really I mean, I figured that was. No, no. Yeah, that's an eleven. Okay. Actually, um, you know, you start walking and. You know, you, you didn't put it on the top on purpose so that it wouldn't be a slick surface, so that was smart. Um, the the wood itself is still very much rotten and wet and kind of decaying, but you can feel, you, you don't feel it being particularly slippery, and you don't feel it sinking in before, which was causing you all that grief, was that it was, the ground was moving out from under you, and you just weren't able to steady yourself. Um, so you make it across slowly, but without incident. Oh my god. You didn't have to use the pink hand, but you could have if you wanted to. What color is your mage hand? Probably like dark purple. Okay. I love this. Pink and purple. Like Lisa Frank made. <laughs> I'm so here for that. Oh my god. Goodbye. Rocket. Um, yeah. So you guys make it across. And you know you're only about like 30, maybe 45 minutes from the road that you were on before. Cool. So go ahead and you know which direction you're going, but go ahead and make a survival check for me. Uh 16. Okay. And actually, you're able to kind of like pick a better route, remembering how you got here before. And he didn't exactly send you on the most direct route. So you kind of pick a straight line between where you need to go and where you're at right now. And with the help of the map and your general knowledge from being from the area, uh, from being an Alethonian. What is it? Alethonian? Alethonian. 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 Okay. Being an Alethonian. You, um, you're able to shave a few minutes off and you actually kind of about 30 minutes or so across the edge of the woods and you're on the road you're on the road the main road and you know that it's essentially like a right turn to go to the um where's castle or left turn to go back to the city all right we're going to laura's castle i guess so yeah okay as good a place as any for now so you take off walking. You know it's pretty close by. Um, you're hoping that he might have something for you all to do. So you're all just sort of, they were all passing through the area, but you're kind of transient by nature. And um, whenever we're within view of the castle, like I hop down from the thing and I shut the front because now I know people think it's a man. So I'm going to get all those benefits, my silent guard. <laughs> he needs a wig and the creepy mask. No, he looks like a suit of armor. Like, he look, just looks like a man in a suit of armor. Hold this guy's head. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Okay. Like he has like a helmet over like the the uh like I can't he's been riding around an elf on our stomach. Oh yeah. well it drops down and then it's like cushioned on the inside, like but if you open it. I just picture like a mini throne. To close it. Yeah. And then you close it and it's just like a like looks like a knight in a suit of armor just following me around. A knight with a door on the front of his armor. It's it just it's like the like where like there would be um like a breastplate. Yeah, it just there's oh, like, like the joints for their arms to move, that kind of a thing. Yeah, it's like it just there's like a thin line here okay. and then on the side where it would close anyway. It's like it okay. opens there, so it's hidden because you don't know until I'm just like, hey, it's not. Yeah. Well, you actually wouldn't be able to reach it to open it, so he probably has to do it for you. I, or does he like kneel down? For you? Like, okay, you go on. Put Politerian and tug on him. Yeah, I'm kidding. Um, okay, so um, you are. You begin traveling uh, down the road. It's it's not a huge um, castle because he's kind of like a minor lord in the area. He does have one really tall tower. So and you're on like a bit of the downward, uh, like over the crest of a hill. So as you're coming up to crest the hill, you are able to see it it's a little far away. You know, so you still have about a, a 20 minute walk. But you, everybody, make a perception check. Oh my god. Ooh. 
Seventeen. Did you say fifty-three? Twenty-three. I said fifty-three. I was like, that's no. You you rolled the percentage die and put it back. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. And you had a seventeen. And you fifteen. Fifteen. Five. Five. Oh no! What about what about? Oh, anything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anytime, so we can't see oh, anything. but my robot got a uh, eighteen. Okay. Yeah. Anytime there's like a general roll that any any observant being, if I don't specify who is rolling, then go ahead and roll. Okay. Yeah. Well, he got an eighteen. I got a five. He's eight more than you. You've got your math out, and you're like <laughs> taking zero. notes uh, on some of the things you've seen. Like, basically. Yeah. Um. So Quiver, it doesn't speak, right? No. Okay. So, pretty much. He's an intelligence of two. Okay. <laughs> oh no! He sees no, things. He's a robot. <laughs> can he um, alert you if he sees things? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he can like point. Stokely. Stokely. Oh no! <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I'm like no. Oh. Uh, so. Well, no, I better not. I forgot what we're streaming. Uh, I'm not going to tell you about some of the stuff that Kate and I have planned. Um, so, um, you two, um, both of you, including Oriana, do notice that they're, um, from this far away, it's hard to tell exactly what it is. You do see that the drawbridge is up, and you see that there seem to be um, people outside. Uh, for you, it's kind of hard to tell what might be going on. It's it's pretty far away. It's a significant walk. You can, in fact, only see it because he's kind of not on a valley per se, but definitely like the downside of a hill. Um, and you're at, uh, at a vantage point. And so you're only just barely able to make out the shapes of people. You um, take a second kind of studying what's going on. And it's you're far enough away. It's a little difficult to determine what exactly might be happening, whether they were initially, at least, uh, whether they were in trading entrance or bartering or breaking news or what have you, but then you are able to see something fly from the ground up, <clears throat> fly from the ground up, and it looks like there might be some firing going back and forth, and there's almost this maybe just like the faintest sounds of shouting, kind of like being carried on the breeze. I love it. So, <laughs> oh you know there's people outside. What'd you say? Uh, I think there's fighting going on. I'm trying to speak for your sake. No, you don't. I, I think it's hilarious, actually. <laughs> like, <laughs> that you're the one who just keeps seeing things, and you're just like, and you're the one who went inside, so you're the one who, like, has the conversation with him, and you're like, fuck it, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Who needs plot hooks? <laughs> no. So you say that, though? Some, yeah, looks like I there's think fighting. There's fighting going. Trying to look like around people, like it's really hard to yeah. see. It's going to be really hard. <laughs> Pushing his glasses up. I played Andy for so long that I was like, oh, I can just pick him up. It doesn't work that way anymore. <laughs> oh, Andy. I'm not super strong anymore. The power of friendship. <laughs> Tall smalls. Friendship. <clears throat> All right, so she says there's danger and no one reacts. That's cool. Well, you guys continue on. We did look. just come out of like a scary witch dragon battle. That's true. Yeah, yeah like, honestly, no yeah. It's like, oh, somebody's fighting. It's like, what else is new? Yeah, whatever. I have, I have my like, hand on my right here when she said that. I'm not drawing it out yet. Okay. But, like, Are we on the castle ground or just nearby? You have, so you exit the forest and you walk for maybe five minutes or so and you crest to the top of a hill. And from here down, um, it's like it's daylight, everyone can see pretty plainly. This is a well-worn road, it's well-traveled. You don't see anyone on it at the moment. Um, the the amount of time it would take, I'm trying to think of like what the real life like distance of this would be. Um, probably like maybe uh, a mile or so um maybe mile and a half away you can see because you're on this sort of like hill vantage point that the land slopes kind of gracefully downward and at sort of like almost what seems to at least from your perspective see like be some sort of basin in the hills um amongst like the forest kind of dotted on the outside is this this keep it's substantial size for someone who would not be of nobility status he looks like a probably some sort of lesser noble um so what you can see is large graystone walls a keep inside and a tall kind of like run down tower or if it's not run down it's really spindly um maybe an ill repair maybe just built to be um like a high prison or something so there's not a lot of substance under it and maybe a room at the top 
but you are um, you're not able to really tell what it is that they're seeing. Your eyes just aren't trained well enough for that, or something's happening. You're not, you're not really quite able to make it out. Um, but you know that it would probably take about 20 minutes or so. So to walk there, if you were to run, it would be faster. But if you keep an eye on it as you get closer, then you know you know that you're looking for something, and you'll be able to kind of make out a little bit more of what's going on. Okay. So it's quite far away. It's really just the vantage point that you had that made them even able to kind of like catch a glimpse of what was going on, and you know, rogue. Super in, super. I almost said insightful, but no, super observant. Observant. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, and look for danger. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of thing you do. I have the observant paint. Yeah, <laughs> you're always looking, always. Um, yeah. Even when I'm not looking, I'm looking. I'm better when I'm not looking. <laughs> I had long conversations with um, when I first started playing fifth edition. Um, before it was actually released, we got the starter pack, and I was just. I had played 3.5 a little bit, so I wasn't very familiar with uh, D&D at all, but it just seemed so stupid to me that you could ever be less observant than thing. your passive perception. Yeah. But it's literally written into the rules that if you're not looking for anything, you're more observant than you're if you're actively looking for something. And I, I get I it because if you're, if you're paying attention to everything, I guess, then you're more likely to, to notice something in general, but if you're... Like, I, I get it, but I don't get it. Yeah. And cases, that, that's one thing. I know a lot of people in some cases make a rule that they... Your, your passive is as low as you can go. Yeah. yeah. I had like I had DMs who was like, roll perception because everyone else like, did really bad. You have like a plus seven or something. I was like, okay. Well, I was like, it's nine. So he was like, your passive is 16. It's fine. You got it. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and I tend yeah. to kind of be more like that anyway. So, um, yeah. It just seems like if that's something that you spent enough time on, then I don't know. Yeah. You'll, you'll probably never crit fail a perception check just because you spent a significant amount of time learning how to pay attention to what was going on around you. Unless there is something that is incredibly uh, captivating yeah, for your yeah. attention, exactly, or like a purposeful distraction, exactly. Um, but yeah, like. But also, perception is more of noticing something is off, not like specifically what it is. Mm -hmm. Like you can. You could like be like, oh, something's definitely wrong here, and then like, and not, not, not know catch what, what it is, is yeah. yeah. Which is the investigation, but yeah, yeah. I can also read lips, by the way. If I can see, but I can't like hear them. Mm -hmm. I can, if it's speaking a language I can understand, I can. Read yeah. Lips. Okay. Just remind me of that if that comes in, into play. So, um. You, you proceed on as you get closer. The two of you, they've pointed out what you're looking for. And so the two of you are able to see um, the, the kind of like people outside. And at first it was hard to tell uh, what exactly was going on. As you get a little bit closer, as you've been walking for about seven minutes or so, um, it's easy to see. There is probably about seven of them. Um, a few are uh, armed with what looks like swords. Uh, one of them seems to have a shield. Um, the rest have at least bows in their hands at the moment, and they're firing over the castle wall. Um, yeah. are we, how far away are we at this point? Um, if you were to start running, it would take you uh, probably about like three or four minutes to get there. At this point, you've, you've covered enough ground that you're, well, okay, no, unless you're really fast. It would probably take you about six or seven minutes to get there at like a sprint. Okay. Um, if I'm you were to get but I can be picked yeah. up. Yeah, well, yeah, you've got... I can be picked up, but I'm... You've I got the Iron Giant. 25. Yeah. Well, he has a speed of 40, so he's faster than everyone, but I'm slower than everybody. Yeah, so... So that depends on how you all proceed. Um, you you can hear the sounds of shouting. The, the castle itself doesn't seem to be... Kind of, too much in a ruckus. There's a little bit of return fire, but mostly the, the drawbridge has just been pulled up. Um, if I see something happening, I'm not just going to walk nonchalantly over there. Okay. I'll probably start running. Okay. So the bard takes off running. And um, if you choose to follow, just let me know. Um, so you take off running. And as you're getting closer, you can hear you can hear them yelling. And they're basically, um, one of them is saying, uh, you know, Come out and face us like men, and he's he's just in general kind of like taunting them, um, hurling a little bit of uh, like derogatory terms and insults, and he's in general kind of causing a ruckus. And they're they're like, you know, you wouldn't beat us in a fair fight. And then you hear somebody else yell. Um, since you can read lips, you 
they're kind it of. It might also be harder for me because I'm sprinting and I get yeah. hard to read lips when you're like moving. Yeah. Um, but based on just like the body postures that you're watching and things like that, it sounds more like somebody's returning when they yell back, you wouldn't find fairly anyway. Um, obviously that seems kind of like a question and answer situation. So, um, you're running, so you're not exactly being quiet and you're kind of coming down a hill. And so as you're kind of like approaching, and are, are all of you running by the way? Um, power walking. Okay. Yeah, she doesn't run. A bitch mindless power walk. She got up and my dog and they all kept standing. I know, I'm so nervous. What happened? Two dead powers. Oh, dang. But the Azure Blasts are really, really, like, they're they're a little wonky shaped. And so they're, like, wiggling all over the place because they're not, like, properly balanced. <laughs> so anytime anybody, like, breathes in the direction of the table, they just start wiggling. And I've been, like, tapping and doing stuff over here just because I'm fidgety and no, I didn't no, even no, notice. Hey, that's part of the challenge. Um, so, um, one of them seems to notice you, um, he like smacks one of the ones next to him and, and, um, you can't really hear what they're saying because they're not yelling anymore at this point and you're still, their faces aren't covered, right? Uh, no, a couple of them have helmets, but for the most part, um, um, make a perception check. Um, may I have a six? (laughs) It doesn't look like anyone you know. Not from this distance. <laughs> They're probably human. Um, so the a couple of them turn and look at you, and they kind of like those couples circle up. And when that happens, uh, an arrow comes like firing over the side of the castle, but it lands in the ground next to them, and they they all look up at it, and they start like hitting the other ones that are still firing over the wall, kind of on the back, and like they start motioning like this. And they begin to um, take up running into, um, they're like running a little bit down the road, but also kind of like into the forest on the other side. So, um, also approaching. Yeah. Yeah. Not it's like a well, coffin, right? I didn't recognize any of them. Yeah. After after a few minutes, you they, they they retreat into the forest. If you wanted to follow them, you could. If you don't, then um, you would reach the foot of the drawbridge, and uh, you're still a little bit behind. Did you did you try running ahead with her as well, or were you? I guess. Okay. You guess. Don't have any really <laughs> What did you do? I <laughs> Okay. So um, I'm just following. So you get there and you're kind of a little bit out of breath and this just seemed like a really odd situation and you're really not sure what to think of it and you hear a voice yell over the, the wall. Who goes there? A friend. We need a name. I don't know my stage name. Your stage name? What if that's your stage name? <laughs> stage Please name. welcome to the stage. I don't know my stage name. Your name is Oriana. <laughs> You're Oriana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be Oriana Grande. No, no, I'm great. I'm Oriana Grande and Adele. <laughs> what? Okay, now okay, I really so, want you to be Oriana. But now I'm every not. bard you play has to be a pun on something. <laughs> my, if I ever made my own YouTube channel, it was going to be Katie Parody. Oh my god. Yeah, I would have just... Mirage. <laughs> that would have been really cool. I would have just said, like, my stage name would be, like, I've visited here before. Okay. So you have a decided. We'll say, we'll say that we you say what it is. You'll say it. your real name, because that's what I think your name is now. No, I, <laughs> at this point, I've probably told you my real name. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Okay. But I haven't told them my real name. Mm, okay. Okay. So they know you by So they they well, know your yeah, yeah. I know. They know you're Oriana, but they the castle knows you as something yet to be decided. Grande. Whatever my name is. <laughs> the castle knows her as fuzzy glitter. No. I'll think about it. Mickey Mirage. No. <laughs> Mickey Mirage is so good. I love that. I'll, I'll okay, I'll look it up now. Okay. While we're doing this. Random name generator. So you, you yell back up and um, no. you don't see anyone per se, but just being you and knowing that you pay attention as you do, you kind of hear like a few hush whispers and there's a few moments of silence and a head pops up 
and you see um, one of the guards that you had, you, you had seen mundanely just in, in your, your uh, couple of days that you had spent here. Um, you know, he'd taken shifts obviously as a guard. And so it's just a face that you recognize briefly from having been in the area. And uh, he, he peeks over and he kind of looks down at you and he looks to everyone else. Um, Olivia is still probably like 30 or so paces away, just kind of like quickly walking with this sort of... In a huff, they yeah. ran ahead. I'm too cool to run. <laughs> um, and he kind of like... I swear to God. Gives you all uh, like a squinty eyed look. He's about 20 feet up, so it's kind of hard to tell that, but um, just a, a, an initial distrust. And then... He looks back and he makes this motion and the drawbridge for slower. And after a few moments, it comes down. And uh, another one of the guards that you had, um, you had encountered again mundanely just in the time that you had spent here. Uh, his name is Philippe. He, um, he comes out to greet you and uh, he kind of bows slightly. That was quite a timely arrival. What was going on? You know, we're not really sure. It's, they didn't seem to have much of a plan. Obviously you can't take a castle with seven people. What did you say? I was like, of course not. Of course not. Do you know who they were? Local rough friends in the area. We've, we've had some trouble with them. The, uh, <laughs> some of the staff seem to think that this is them testing our defenses or something along that, you know, captain is a little worried, but I think that they're just bored. Travel has been down lately. They don't have anything else to do in there. Entertaining themselves. He kind of like rolls his eyes. Like this is stupid. As long as everyone stays out of the way, they can't really do anything or they haven't done anything successfully yet. And he just, it's just like an annoyance to him. It seems. Did you uh, have business with the Lord? Did he expect you to return? Well, no, but I was in the area, so I figured I would stop by and see how everyone was doing. Fair enough. Well, we're familiar with you. We're, in, we're not familiar with your friends. Assume that they come in good standing on your name, so if anything happened, then we'll consider you accountable. And them as well, as well of course. Unless you don't vouch for them. To an extent. Make a persuasion roll. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting that you can do stuff like that. <laughs> that makes it better, though. 13. You can see him kind of taking a moment to assess that this and maybe he's determining whether or not he should be the one accepting that kind of a, an arrangement. Very well. Can't hold another person wholly responsible for someone else's actions. Thank you for understanding. Okay, I swear to God. If but I did, I do vouch for their character enough to believe that they would like to see the beautiful castle that you have. He perks up a little bit at that. So as well, you know, we've we've been trying to uh, fix the place up a bit, you know, after the lady of the place uh, departed this world. Would Things I know that, or did it happen well? You know that there wasn't one around. Um, he's speaking a little frankly, um, probably more than a guard should be. Um, well, it looks quite lovely. Hmm. The master has gotten himself, the lord, so has gotten himself a little uh, more into... Taking care of things, you might say. And how is the Lord? He takes a moment to think and he yes. kind of stands up a little straight and you get the impression that he realizes he's probably been a little too frank. He says, he is well, of course. We keep him well prote protected. That's good news. Hmm. Uh, if you'll all wait in the courtyard here, then I'll have someone come greet you. And he kind of waves you in and um, proceeds on into the castle. And do you all enter? 
Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, the drawbridge <laughs> does begin to raise behind you. It's not like a threatening action inherently. They're just it's obviously like, like get out. yeah, basically like Ooh. we're in the middle of something right now. This is this was fortuitous, but we're not exactly taking chances. Um, and after a few moments.